hear me now. Hey, I'm Astrobit, also known as Brian Mulligan, uh, grad student here at UT. All right, astronomy in the news, May of 2016. All right, so a group of scientists from the US and China, including former uh, UT astronomer and NSF postdoc, uh, like MC, MC Super Dupernova, uh, Dr. Janelle Walsh, now at Texas A&M, seen down in the, the lower corner. Hopefully you can see it over everybody's heads. Uh, used a radio telescope called ALMA. It is a, uh, a, a telescope located in the Atacama Desert of Chile at about 15,000 feet of altitude. It's been used to make the most precise measurement of a supermassive black hole to date. Um, they measured the speed of carbon monoxide gas. Many of you know carbon monoxide from, from your homes. Well, hopefully not from your homes. <laughs> Uh, the, the carbon monoxide is orbiting the black hole at the very heart of a giant elliptical galaxy. That's what you see in the, the image here. Uh, the disk of gas total is about 1,600 light years across. The telescope was used to measure only the, the innermost 80 light years of this disk of gas. Um, so, and w right in the region where the, where the gravity of the black hole is most distinct. Um, Alma's unprecedented resolution allowed the team to, to look into this, this very tiny area where the, the, it looked in the very tiny innermost region where, where the black hole is the only thing that's responsible for it. It's the first time that this has ever happened. Uh, they measured the mass of the black hole at 660 million times the mass of, mass of our sun. All right, uh, Alma was also used to detect a what's called a dwarf dark galaxy. Uh, a mass of the galaxy is about one billion suns, only a little bit bigger than the, the, than the mass of the black hole that, that Alma measured. Um, this study used gravitational lensing, which our own MC uh, High z and several other uh, astronomy on tap uh, Austin speakers have talked about, where the gravity of a relatively nearby galaxy bends the light of a more distant galaxy behind it, uh, making the distant, distant galaxy easier to see. So here we see the relatively nearby galaxy, which is about four billion light years away. Uh, th that, th that galaxy is in blue. The more distant galaxy is the distorted red thing that you see in a ring around it. Um, the dwarf galaxy is orbiting the blue galaxy. The white speck that you see with the arrow pointing to it is the thing that, that, that we're looking at. Uh, the white dot indicates where it is. The, the galaxy is actually dark. This is a false color image just pointing out where this, this galaxy is. Um, this is the first time that we've, ev we've ever been able to detect such a tiny little galaxy, relatively speaking, uh, ever using, using this technique. Uh, next up, a special breakthrough prize uh, has been awarded. $3 million was given to the LIGO collaboration. You might remember that, for, uh, some LIGO talks from a, a few months back. Um, for the re recent detection of gravitational waves of merging black holes. Uh, of the $3 million, $1 million is split between the, the three founders of the project, who are Ronald Drever, Kip Thorne, who's the science advisor on Interstellar, if you've seen that, and uh, Reiner Weiss. The remaining $2 million is split, split between the 1,012 authors who are on the paper, <laughs> <laughs> including scientists from Texas Tech, UT Rio Grande Valley, Trinity University in San Antonio, and Abilene Christian University, uh, and former AOT, AOTATX speaker, nullifier of noise, Dr. Dennis Ugolini. And I'm sorry we couldn't fit all 1,015 scientists on the screen. <laughs> Um, okay, next up, a successor to the Hubble Space Telescope, the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, had the last of its mirrors installed just this last month, and the mirror covers removed. JWS JWST was then folded up and flipped over to finish installation of the science instruments. Uh, you might recognize in the lower right-hand corner, uh, former UT Austin astronomer and AOT ATX speaker, destroyer of worlds, Dr. Joel Green. Uh, the JW, JWST will be coming to U Houston later this year uh, to, for testing in the vacuum chamber that was used for testing of the Apollo space capsules. It will then be sent on to California for finalizing construction and finally sent to French Guiana and launched into space in October of 2018. Uh, JW, JW, JWST will be using infrared light to study the birth of stars, planets, and galaxies.
All right, the Kepler mission was in the news twice this month. Uh, first of all, the Kepler spacecraft had gone into emergency mode on April 8th. After working tirelessly for about two weeks, the mission team got the telescope working again on the m morning of April 22nd. It is now in the second phase of its mission, looking, still looking for planets around distant stars. Uh, the, team, the, the Kepler team also announced on May 10th the confirmation of 1,284 new planets discovered by Kepler, bringing the total up to over 3,000. Uh, of these uh, 1,284 new planets, 550 of them could be something like Earth, kind of a rocky planet, and nine of those are potentially habitable planets. Uh, now we just need to figure out how to get there. <laughs> All right, uh, many of you have heard uh, or, or perhaps saw on May 9th, Mercury and passed in front of our sun from our perspective here on Earth. This is known as a transit. Uh, it was visible from most of the world except for Australia and some other parts of Asia as well as Antarctica. Uh, Mercury transits our sun over dozens, dozens of times each century. Unlike Venus, it only does so about once every 110 years. Uh, the next transit of Mercury will be November 11th, 2019. It will start just before sunrise here in Austin. Uh, that Mercury trans transits the Sun was first predicted by Johannes Kepler, first observed in 1631 by Pierre Gassendi. Uh, the space telescope that now bears Kepler's name, the Kepler Space Telescope, looks for planets in other solar systems by watching those planets pass in front of their stars, just like Mercury did to our, to our Sun. Um, our own star party queen ran a huge transit viewing party on uh, UT's campus. Hopefully some of you were there and, and saw bits and pieces of it. All right. Uh, the Hubble Space Telescope was used to find another moon in our solar system, this one orbiting the icy dwarf planet Makemake. Uh, Makemake is the second brightest dwarf planet after Pluto. It's named for the creation deity of the Rapa Nui people of Easter Island. Uh, Makemake is visible in this image as the really bright spot uh, in the lower half of the screen, the big fuzzy thing in the middle. Uh, the moon, nicknamed MK2, the arrow is pointing at it. It's this little tiny fuzzy patch right above it. Uh, the discovery of its moon will ast allow astronomers to find the mass and density of Makemake and its moon, and to learn more about how our solar system formed. Dr. Alex Parker, who designed the main AOTX logo, was one of those who were involved in the discovery of, of this moon. Um, yes, woo! All right. And let's see if I can scroll down here. No, that's not going to work. There's more info, but I can't read it. So that's what we're going to get. All right. Uh, also from a team that Dr. Alex Parker was a part of, the New Horizons team at NASA uh, released this new black and white map of Pluto. It's uh, the, the highest resolution map of Pluto that we have yet. It incorporates images that were taken between July 7th and 14th of 2015. The famous heart is visible in the middle of this image. I think you can kind of pick it out. Uh, the spacecraft is still sending images and information back to the, the science teams here on Earth. It's so far away that it takes four and a half hours for information to get from the, set, the, the spacecraft out past Pluto to, to us here on Earth. Um, because of the distance, it's going to take another six months for all the information from that one week long flyby to, to get back to us. The most re recent information included in this map arrived on April 25th. All right, and speaking of hearts, there was a heart-shaped sunspot visible on the sun in mid-April. It erupted into a flare on April 17th. Uh, the sunspot's pretty huge by our, our standards, with size several times uh, that of the, the entire planet Earth. Uh, the shape of the sunspot is caused by the interplay of magnetic fields within the sun. Uh, sunspots are dark only because they're cooler than the surrounding areas of, of the sun. It's not sucking in light. Uh, most of the surface of the sun is about 6,000 degrees Kelvin or about 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Sunspots are a nice balmy 3,500 Kelvin or uh, 6,000 Fahrenheit. Only a tad warmer than summer here in Austin. <laughs> Uh, no word yet on whether Torchies is planning on opening up any sunspot locations. <laughs> All right, and that is it for Astronomy in the News for May of 2016. <laughs> Thank you.